jabs you were talking about. Oh, Tyron. oh man. That one caught him good. I Paul, think that's the one. A right hand. This may be it. This, this right hand. Hey guys, welcome to another episode with Mad Dimes MMA. That's right, I'm back. Thank you to Tino and Profit for holding down the fort while I get take care of business. But we are back to break down UFC 304, Bilal Muhammad versus Leon Rocky Edwards. The card we were, I guess, waiting for? I don't know, I'm not too hyped on this main event. It's just decision versus decision maker. I haven't got, only gotten like four finishes between the two in the last eight years. But overall... Stacked card, top to bottom. I'm excited to break this card down. And I am joined today with a new D-Gen, someone I've been trying to get on this uh, channel for a long time. Please welcome my favorite time traveler, Litz. How are you doing, Litz? Hey, what's good, my boy? What's good? Uh, yeah, I've been trying to trying to hop on one of these for a minute, so I'm glad I could uh, hook up for a decent card. A lot of yeah. fights to talk about. Litz is from our little group chat. He's a, we call him the time traveler because no matter what we do, when we're all watching the videos, uh, the fights together and talking about him, he's somehow minimum like three, five minutes ahead of us. Like I was watching UFC 296 live and I swear to God, he was still ahead of me. I don't know how, I don't know how he does this. And just some of the, crazy, man. yeah. And some of the props you hit, like, finishes in like round two and round three it's just crazy like how you hit these things but I'm yeah i mean it, it takes a lot of research to find the spots but man it only it only takes a couple so yeah no it just takes a little bit of research i'm excited to hear some of your takes but we're gonna dive right into the picks we got 14 fights here it's gonna be one heck of a card but kicking it off we have modestus bukowskis versus marcin parachnio uh i was a bit back and forth on this but i think i'm gonna take modestus bukowskis here uh, I'm just not really impressed with Marcin Paracnio. I think he does have a bit of a power advantage, but just looking at his resume, his best win is Devin Clark, and I just, I'm not too impressed. Um, Adestis Bukowskis does have a bit of a grappling disadvantage here. Uh, it feels like when he gets taken to the mat, he's kind of clueless on what, what he's going to do, but I just think if it stays on the feet, which I do think it's going to be, I think Modestus Bukowskis is going to have a bit of a striking advantage, but yeah, I, yeah but I think I'm going to be going with the Baltic Gladiator Modestus Bukowskis to get this one done. What do you got for me, Litz? Uh, yeah, pretty much the same kind of breakdown. Um, I'm just, uh, I mean, to be honest, Bukowskis is really low volume, man. Like he's got a negative striking differential. I mean. Prashny on just throws so many more strikes. I mean, if this goes the full 15, I honestly could see it being pretty close. To me, this is like pure stay away, dogger pass. You know, unless you like maybe Bukowskis by like decision or something, but like this, I can't spend this here. No way. I'm honestly something I've been on the fence with. I think Prachnio is the underdog. I was thinking plus three and a half Prachnio, but I wasn't too sure. I, I was thinking of just waiting to get your opinion on that one. Yeah, honestly, I'm I'm probably I'm probably gonna hit that to be honest, because like most of his most of his fights, like the Tyson Pedro fight, I mean, super fucking close. Zach Palga fight, super fucking close. Outlanded in both of those. I mean, to be honest, yeah, as long as the the numbers decent on Prashnail out plus three and a half, I'll probably play it. To be honest. Moving up the card, we have Shauna Bannon versus Alice Ardalean. I honestly low level women's MMA. If you're betting on this, you are insane. But if I have to make a choice here, I have to go with Shauna Bannon. All be, it all really comes down to, I short notice for one, for Alice Ardalan, and she's an OnlyFans model. And rule of thumb with OnlyFans models, unless you're Jessica Andraj, it comes into question like how dedicated you are. And in low-level women's MMA, it's just kind of like, logic doesn't really apply here. They're both sloppy strikers like both going to want to pressure both going to want to dictate the pace and i think i'm just going to have to go with mama b i think she's going to be the one who's going to be in her face going to be pushing her back although alice ardalean does have high tier like uh competition experience against like diana balbita and i think it was Zhang Wei li yeah Zhang Wei li but it was 
a lot of people are saying that, but that was like way early on in both their careers. So I don't really know how relevant it is anymore because they've evolved so much. But I think I'm going to have to go with Shauna Bannon here. I think it's going to be very close. It's women's MMA. You can't really predict this. But if I had to choose, I'm, I'm going to go with Shauna Bannon to be the one to dictate the pace here. What do you think, Litz? Yeah, same same thing. Not really a ton to take away from me. It's just, I mean, to be honest, this this line is like wide on Bannon. Like wide. Like she is she is ass. I mean, horrible striking de- differential. Um, yeah, terrible accuracy, terrible striking defense. I mean, <laughs> she's terrible. It's just to be honest, I don't really know what this OnlyFans like. I I didn't get to watch like a shit ton of her fights to be honest. So I don't really know how good she is. It's, I mean, this number's crazy. Like, yeah, not, this would be another one, maybe a plus three and a half, to be honest with you. Oh, you think it's going to be a close one? I mean, it, it, it could be. I mean, like I said, I think Bannon's like her striking, like 37% striking difference. And that was versus Bruna Brazil, man. Like, yikes. And she outlanded Bannon and landed takedowns. I mean, and personally, I, I really don't rate Bruna at all. Like, I'm, we're, I'm probably going to hammer Meatball versus Bruna Brazil, so. Yeah, I can't, I can't wait to get to that breakdown. But moving up the card, yeah. we have Sam Patterson versus Kiefer Crosby. I was looking for a good reason to take Kiefer Crosby because I, I'm i not the big Sam, biggest Sam Patterson fan. I think his chin is, has been very questionable. But I'm going to have to take Sam Patterson here. I think looking at uh, Crosby's fight against Kev, uh, Juse, he was doing pretty good at the start and closing the distance. But his grappling is like very suspect. And this size advantage from Sam Patterson is going to be very apparent here. I mean, he's got an eight inch reach advantage. He's like four inches height advantage. And even if Crosby like breaks that distance, I think I just have to trust Sam Patterson's grappling to just get this one done. So it's not, to me, I think I got to go with Sam Patterson here. I think he's going to be able to keep Crosby at range. And even if Crosby breaks that range, I can trust Sam Patterson's grappling to get the sub here. So give me Sam Patterson to get this one done. What do you think, Litz? Yeah, it makes sense. Makes sense. Um, I, I faded Sam Patterson really big versus Yamal um, Ashmoos when Ashmoos absolutely fucking face planted him, absolutely destroyed him. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't think his chin is very good. I just don't know if Kiefer's, I don't know if Kiefer's power is going to be good enough. Like Ashmoos was at a similar um, disadvantage with height and reach. And he was still able to close the distance because Sam Patterson's really not, he doesn't really use the range, to be honest. He wants to bang. But uh, I just don't know if Keeper has the power, to be honest, to crack the chin anyway. I think Sam Pat, I mean, they're kind of setting Sam Patterson, to be honest, at least to me. Yeah, I mean, yeah, he is the future, so they got to make sure that that future is looking bright. Yeah. But yeah, no, this that, this one's kind of simple here. I mean, I want Keeper Crosby to win, but I. I just can't find a good reason for him to win. But moving up the card, we have Oban Elliott versus Preston Parsons. Uh, I think I'm going to have to go with Preston Parsons here. Another instance where I want the Welsh gangster to win. But after watching his Val Woodburn fight, true, he was dominating on the mat. But he got early on, he was, he got dropped by Val Woodburn. I mean, Val Woodburn, I guess you can say, yeah, he's a bit power. He's a muscle head, a little big <laughs> meatball with power. Yeah. But he's such a one-dimensional like striker. Like I- I'm just looking back at Val Woodburn's resume, I'm just not impressed. And if I have to be honest, it- Matthew Semmelsberger, that win, that is way that that means way more to me than like a Val Woodburn. I just think this is going to be a Preston Parsons fight. I think the grappling is going to be the tail of this fight. I think Preston Parsons is going to be able to get this to the mat dominate work for work for submissions i think i can trust his activity on the mat too i give me preston parsons to be the pressure and to get this one done what do you got for me litz yeah i mean i i expect a. Uh, I mean this is either going to be a terrible terrible striking fight or just basically wrestle fuck like <laughs> the entire time i mean just two two guys who completely rely on the takedowns to me I feel like Oban might be might have a little bit of a striking edge, but I mean Preston's wins like win over Evan Elder, aging pretty good to me, and you know, but like you said, the win over Semmelsberger. I mean, these trump everything that Oban Elliott has. Um, 
I don't I don't know. It's just such a close fight because to me, Preston Parsons, I don't really like the gas tank. So, but I mean, free fight. Yeah, I, I feel like Parsons would be the side and then maybe you could like live bet Elliot if it's looking like a problem. Yeah, this you thinking this is a, more of a live bet sort of thing? I, I mean, I, I definitely want to see what the early... I don't know who the better wrestler is, to be honest. I, like, I think this could be really close in the grappling. Um, I mean, I definitely lean Parsons, but I Obon's, Obon's tough, he's big, and Obon's definitely got better cardio. So, yeah, I'm definitely interested to see live on it. Do you think there's any finishing potential? Mm, probably not, to be honest. I, I really don't think so. <laughs> it's just going to be a decision fight? Yeah, I expect another decision fight. Yeah, I can definitely see that, too. But moving up the card, we have Mick Parkins versus Lucas Bereski. This is the most underwhelming heavyweight fight I've, I've seen in a while. Besides the Mo Usman fight that happened. Yeah, there. Mo Usman last week, baby. Yeah, <laughs> no, that was... How many parlays did you think that could? Dude, pe- people were so... I Like, I swear, I look, I'm, I'm in a bunch of discords. There were so many people confident in Mo Usman last week. Absolute comedy seeing him get outstruck by Thomas Peterson. I mean, I'm laughing my ass off. Yeah, and everyone's breakdown for Thomas Peterson was the wrestling, the wrestling. No yeah. one expected. Yeah, had to wrestle. Yep. Crazy. He, he just went out there and outstruck him. Like, But, man, he's bringing down the Usman name a little bit. But, honestly, to me, I it's funny that we're talking shit about Mo Usman, but I have to go with Mick Parkins here. One of the reasons is it's going to be a close stand-up, and I think Mick Parkins is just I'm a touch more impressive on the feet. I mean, the way he was out striking Mo Usman, granted, I don't really know how to rate Mo Usman anymore, but also I just think he's going to have the better camp. He's the sparring partner to Tom Aspen also, and they're both preparing for the same card, so I think he's going to come out probably looking one of the, in the best shape he's ever been, but... I, I, they're just both so underwhelming. I just think this is going to be a sl- like a long, sloppy strike fest. And although Bresky has that win over Walter Walker, Walker like gassed 30 seconds into the fight. Like he had been amped up as this very big, very athletic, like the better Johnny Walker. And he just like flopped. And, I, and even then, I didn't think Bresky looked that good. So... If I have to give you a lean, I'm going to lean Mick Parkins. I think he's just had the better camp, and he's just been looking just a smudge better. But what do you got for me, Litz? Yeah, I definitely agree. To, to me, it's got to be Parkin here. Parkin's got to be the side pre-fight. I just think, like, I mean, beating beating Walter Walker, like, that, that proves nothing to me. Because, I mean, honestly, a lot of people going in, like, we saw the tape on Walter. He was terrible in the stand-up. Absolutely terrible. So, like, Bresky winning there doesn't really mean anything. What I what I took away is like I still remember him getting absolutely chinned by Cortez Acosta, absolutely chinned by Carl Williams. I mean, listen, I, I see bet online, dude. Mick Parkin KO is plus three hundred. That's low as fuck. So nobody, somebody knows something. I think. Ooh, that's low, low as shit for Mick Parkin because usually you expect like sloppy heavyweights, like even the over minus one bitty for a Parkin fight, like that's low. I, I think there's definitely some KO upside on Parkin this week. Where, do you think Mick Parkins has has that to KO power? I don't I don't really know. But I don't think Waldo Cortez Acosta has KO power. I, like I, I don't think I don't think Waldo's like the craziest hitter in the world, and he absolutely decimated Bresky, decimated him. Yeah, that so, that picture. Know. Yeah, you've seen that picture of just uh, Bresky like face planning after getting KO. Yeah. yeah. Uh, that was oh i still i love that photo but yeah cortez acosta he, he throws punches like he throws a baseball like just winds that shit up and just yeah, throws it absolutely but yeah. I, I, I wish mick parkin like it, it maybe if mick parkin came in and like i saw him really in shape because honestly in some of his fights he's pretty he's pretty fat to be honest but if he comes in really in shape i, I think he could do some damage to be honest i don't know yeah, I'm curious to see how that turns out. And working with Tom Aspinall has got to help with that one. But moving up the card, we have Callan Lauren versus Jake Hadley. I hope I pronounced Callan's name right, but we're going to go with it. Uh, honestly, I think Jake Hadley's the overall better fighter here. 
but the only reason I'm probably not going to take him is, well, a couple reasons. One, Jake Hadley taking this on short notice after the fight he took with Charles Johnson, where he got dropped early on, kind of like is a red flag to me because it also shows me that his chin's cracking. And going up against Lauren, who's got bricks for hands, and if it need be, can also wrestle, I think it's just a bad combination here. I think Jake Hadley isn't doing himself any favors. I get why he's trying to get on this card, but I th- I can definitely see Jake Hadley having moments on the feet and then Lauren just landing a bombshell and just hurting Hadley and Hadley just shoots for a takedown and Lauren's wrestling come, kicks in and just keeps this on the feet or just ends up on top. So I think I'm going to take Lauren here. I think this Jake Hadley on a full camp this would be a lot closer for me because I think Jake Hadley is just a bit more well-rounded. But I, coming off that Charles Johnson loss where he got dropped, going up against this heavy hitter who can also wrestle, I think it, I think this is just a bad recipe for Hadley. So give me Cowlin the Don Lauren to get this one done. What do you got for me, Litz? Yeah, I mean, like you touched on there, I I really think this is a bad recipe for for Jake Hadley. Moving moving up in weight versus a really tough grappler like um, Allen. I don't really... Hadley gets top times a lot, man. Like, Turden was absolutely top timing him like crazy. Candelario takes him down. Nascimento takes him down. Fucking Mitch Raposo's top timing him. Like, I mean, Callen is a physical wrestler. Like, you mentioned, you know, he can bomb too. I honestly think he's going to be ducking at legs immediately because it's so easy to take Hadley down. He can easily top top time him for 15 minutes, maybe even go for a sub. But I honestly think Callen's one of the best like money line spots this week. Like if you're looking for a parlay piece, I think value to risk. He's pretty good. Ooh, I love I love how you have a different view with this. What makes you think he's going to shoot immediately just because uh, I- Hadley can't stuff a takedown? Well, yeah, pretty much. I mean, it, he was wrestling pretty fast versus Angel too. I, well, I mean, I guess he tried to he tried to mix it in the late rounds. Uh, I, I I just don't think he's gonna want anything to to do with Hadley on the feet. I think Hadley's probably the better striker, so I don't I don't really think he's gonna want to hang around on the feet. Yeah, that's a solid. Honestly, you great takes there. There, I wouldn't even consider Callan like immediately shooting. But that's that's a nice perspective I wasn't thinking about. But he took down T- Taylor Lapolis too. He like his wrestling is really good. So I honestly just think he's going to go right for it. Ooh, that is an underrated like that is an underrated prop taking down Lapolis. I think Lapolis is also yeah. pretty good. Yeah, but, I like Lapolis a lot. But moving up the card, we have Molly Meatball McCann versus Bruna Brazil. I I really wanted to take Bruna Brazil because just how much of an underdog she is, but. I can't. I just can't. I can't. I I wish she wrestled more because Molly McCann has been showing that her grappling is so suspect. I mean, granted, she's coming off that armbar submission over Deanna Bobita. I mean, congratulations. You, you subbed a pure striker. Good for you. But, yeah, no. Bruna Brazil, low output, doesn't wrestle, and I can just see Molly McCann walking her down, feeding off that crowd, and just perhaps landing that another highlight KO. Like 10 bucks she's going to land that spinning elbow. I wish that was a prop because I can see that happening. But, I definitely see it, yeah. yeah. But I, I just, I tried. I looked for a reason to take Bruna. I can't figure out how to take this, to take a shot at Bruna. So I ju- I'm just going to go with Molly Meatball. I think she's going to just dog walk her on the feet. And I guess she's been working on her grappling too. So even if Bruna shoots for a half-ass takedown, I can see Molly stuffing that shit. So give me Meatball to get this one done. What do you got, Litz? Yeah, pretty pretty same, pretty much same opinion. They're, uh, they're really good at matchmaking Molly. They're really good at matchmaking Molly. <laughs> like... If they want, if they want the grappler to win, they will give her a grappler. Like Aaron Blanchfield, Tyler Santos, like, boom, easy. And then they want Molly McCann to put somebody on a highlight reel, like the Belbita armbar or fucking elbowing Goldie in the next week. Like they know what they're doing. They're so good with matchmaking Molly, and I think this is another one. I honestly think she's got Bruna covered everywhere. Yeah, I want to take Molly, like money line, maybe minus three and a half to bring that down. But man. I am just so scarred from how many times she screwed me. 
yeah, I mean, but when you look at it, like, Stoli, her, the thing is, her sub defense is really bad. Her sub defense is so bad. So, like, Stoli Arenka was just a horrible matchup for her because, like, one grappling exchange, she's done. Same thing with Aaron Blanchfield, really. But, like, Runa's, <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, no. You're, yeah, thank you for bringing me, bringing me back to reason. But moving up the card, we have Nathaniel Wood versus Daniel Pineda. I'm going to keep this short, sweet, and to the point. Nathaniel Wood is probably my most confident pick on this card. He's a minus 500 for a reason. First off, like his scrambles with Andre Feely were just so beautiful. They were a work of art in my mind. His fight with Muhammad Naimov, he was really picking up the pace until Naimov got away with those flagrant fouls and just shut down any momentum he was getting. And Daniel Pineda, he's an, he's an aging fighter, can't teach an old dog new tricks. He's not really impressive wherever the fight goes. I I don't really, I can't trust Daniel Pineda anywhere. I think this is a good setup for Nathaniel Wood. So give me Nathaniel Wood to get this one done. What do you got for me, Litz? Yeah, not much, not much else for me to say. I'm really just hoping that Daniel Pineda does something for like the first five minutes so we can get a live entry on Wood at a better price, to be honest. Like I like Wood, it's just, he's the line's a little wide considering how many times I've seen Wood like dropped. But, I mean, I still think he's probably going to be fine, to be honest. I don't think Pineda's, like, the hardest hitter in the world. Yeah, I, I mean, his specialty is grappling, and honestly, it's just... what Against Alex Caceres, all he really did was just hold him up against a fence. Like, yeah, no, this this one is simple. I wish we could get a better line. Maybe minus three and a half, because I, I don't see Pineda winning a single round here. Like... So they're gonna yeah. be a, it's probably gonna be a 30-27 if I have to be honest. But moving up the card, we have Muhammad Makayev versus Manel Cape. And honestly, I was leaning Manel Starboy, but now I'm definitely on Starboy because I was keeping an eye on his training camp, and something that really stuck out to me is who he's been training with. He's been out there training with Tajir Ulimbekov. Umar Nurmagomedov, Saeed Nurmagomedov. Like, he's training with the right people to beat Makayev. Because everyone in their mother knows what Makayev is going to do. He's going to grapple. That's all he does. And lately, he's Makayev has been cutting it crazily close. Like, in a lot of his fights. Like, Alex Perez, sure, he started off well. Showed off a little bit of his striking that he's been working on. But he gassed really early on. And it started to get dicey. I'll, even though Mikhaev's like, oh, I, ha- I had a staph infection, so my gas tank is... So I guess we'll give him a pass. But then Tim Elliott, he was losing that fight. But all all three judges had the first two rounds for Tim Elliott. And even the judges bailed Mikhaev out when Tim Elliott was timing those knees, like, straight to his face. And then got a Hail Mary triangle choke in the third. Even against Jafel Filio, like... When it got to the feet, it felt like he didn't know what he wanted to do. He just all all he can think about was getting it back to the mat. And even when he did in the third round, I think it was, like he got put in a knee bar that practically bent his fucking knee like thirty de- like a ninety degree angle. I don't know how he like is, is still walking because of how deep that was in. But I'm going with Cop here because I can tr- I think I can trust his ability to keep it standing. Even though he was he was taken out taken by Nicolau, I'm gonna give him a pass for getting taken down by Nicolau because he's a kickboxer. No one expects him to shoot, but he's been working with the right competition. He's gonna be light years ahead of Mikhaev on the feet. I think this is a perfect spot for Manel Cape to get a good rebound. So give me Manel to get this one done. What do you think, Litz? Yeah. So just to start with Mikhaev, man. I have come so close to getting his ass multiple times. Like, I literally had Tim Elliott by decision. Literally had Alex Perez by decision. Super close fight. I mean, that Alex Perez one was so close. I, I really think if Alex Perez wasn't off that rusty, he, I think he was rusty off the layoff because he looked so much better in the Nick Lau fight afterwards. I really think if that was 100% Alex Perez, he wins that fight. Like, he, Makayev looked awful in that fight. And then, like you said, Tim Elliott was up 2-0, outstriking Muhammad Makayev, keeping up with the takedown, sub attempts. I think somebody's going to get his ass. And I really, really, really think it's Manel Kopp, man. His power, 
is for real for a 125er. I've been watching this guy, you know, since his rising days. His power is for real. Like the way that he knocked down Felipe de Santos, Dvorak, KO'd Zalgas, which, I mean, who the hell KO's Zalgas? Like, that motherfucker's tough as shit. The flying knee over Osborne, like, he. He is so exciting for a 125er. He's got the power. I think he's got the volume. Really, it comes down to can he manage the wrestling? And I just think he's seen it before. Like, he's fought Kaya Sakura back in Ryzen. He's fought Kyoji, uh, Kyoji Horiguchi. Sorry about that. Um, back in Ryzen, again, uh, you know, grapplers, guys that want to take him down. He's seen all these looks. And I don't think Mohamed Makaya is on that level. I don't think his takedowns are that good. I don't think his control time's that good. That's why he has to put up you know, 8, 10, 12 takedown attempts in a fight. So, I don't know, man. I, I, you know, money keeps coming in on Makaya. We'll, we'll see. But I think this is the no cop season. You know how fucking upset I was when Tim Elliott got subbed in the third round? Because not only did I lose oh, money, awful. but I had like oh. a double shoey bet with our buddy Skork. So right when I was like oh, grieving, right when, right when I was in the middle of grieving, he just shoots me a message like, where's those shoeys at? And I'm just like, can you like wait for me oh. to like recover? <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, it was, the decision was so close. I mean, it was so close. It was right had there. To get that. Yeah. And even if he gave yeah. that round away, he would have won. Um, I'm actually also holding a Manel Cop to be UFC champion ticket. I honestly think if he comes out here and let, let's say he flatlines Makayev, I think he's going to get the title shot come December. I honestly think that might have might be live, but I don't know. It depends on this result, I guess. Damn, him face Pantoja is close. I mean, yeah, I mean they had a banger first fight, and I think Cop has really improved since the first fight. So, I mean, I don't know. I think it would be a banger. Is it me or does Pantoja like always look looks like he's gassing, and it makes you I, think like, oh, he's going to slow down, and he's just yeah. somehow just doesn't. Dude, I keep betting this. I keep betting Pantoja, man. He respects the coin. He's the dog. Like the way that he fights. Like if if you bet on fighters, like that's how you want somebody to fight. Like he just fights through everything. Crazy. Yeah, I don't know how he does it. He's a dog, bro. Yeah. And moving up the card, we have Arnold Almighty Allen versus Giga Jakedzi. Okay, I think this is gonna go similarly to. Calvin Cater versus Giga Chikedzi. I think Calvin Cater really like laid out the blueprint to how to beat Giga. And I think Arnold Allen has all the tools he needs to follow that game plan and beat Giga. Basically, constant pressure to Giga to throw his rhythm off. Mix in the grappling, which Arnold Allen has good offensive grappling. And just outbox him. And I think he can do all three of those easy. Honestly, Giga, also, Giga just he was supposed to be this big thing and he just hasn't really lived up to the hype i mean in his fight with alex caceres he like broke alex caceres's arm in like the first round like early on and still kept it pretty competitive low output and i think arnold allen is he's just been getting all that high level experience he has the good boxing he has the offensive wrestling and i really like his fight iq looking back at the Mar masvar evloa fight where Evloev was like taking advantage of that bullshit one hand on the mat. Can't knee me in the face. He was like, okay, bet. Lifts, knees, lifts, knees. Like I was, that was thinking outside the box. And I, I really respect that sort of thinking. So I think Arnold Allen here is a good pick for a parlay piece. I think he has every tool in it needed to beat Giga. Give me Arnold Allen to get this one done. What do you got for me, Litz? Like, I mean, I'd love to talk to you about it. I just think this line is like wide. Like Arnold Allen coming off two losses now, and now he's fighting another striker who's longer than him, taller than him. I mean, the volume, he even throws more strikes than, than Arnold Allen. I mean, obviously I expect Arnold Allen to win because I think I think he's just fought the better guys, you know, the Max Holloway performance aging like fine wine and he almost had Evloev out of there, nasty knees. I mean, just this line is like crazy wide for basically what I think is going to be a 15 minute striking match. I mean, it depends. We'll see if Arnold Allen mixes in takedowns or not, but if this is a striking match, I don't really see how Arnold Allen covers this number. I don't know. 
Ooh, so you're not as confident in Arnold Allen? I, I mean, I just I don't think he's he doesn't bring striking the way that Qatar does. I don't think. And even that performance was a crazy. I mean, the volume that Calvin was putting out there was absolutely insane. After the Max Holloway, that was literally the performance after the Max Holloway fight where he got skulled too. I mean, crazy performance. Yeah, no, I don't know. I you kind of see think maybe a live bet. Oh, you're looking for this live. Actually, yeah, yeah this I, would be a nice. I, I, I just I, I think Arnold's going to be available at a way better number than what is he two to one, two and a half to one. I mean, yeah. that's. Topology is a minus two sixty. Yeah. Yeah, that just seems crazy to me in a striking fight. That's probably going to decision. I don't know. Yeah. Well, you know what? You may have a point on the live getting him at a better price. I'm still pretty confident in him, but I can definitely see Giga like early on looking good. Arnold Allen's trying to figure out that range and that price tag slowly going down. Yeah. I can definitely see that happening. Okay. But, yeah, Arnold Allen seems like a good pick for me, personally. But, moving up the card, we have Christian Leroy Duncan versus Gregory Robobama Rodriguez. This, looking at this, it was very close, but because they're both very good strikers, CLD being a tad more durable, but I think I'm going to have to go with RoboCop here. Uh, for looking at CLD's performance against Armin Petrosian, I got two thing. I took two things away from this. One, CLD can get taken to the mat and he can get controlled. And I just think uh, Gregory Rodriguez is a way better grappler than Armin Petrosian. And two, CLD doesn't seem to have that grit. He doesn't seem to have that sense of urgency. Like when he was clearly down going into the third, he just didn't take any risks. He didn't like try to get, get this one out of here, get this out of the judge's hands. And what even in his mind could have been a very close uh, fight. Gregory Rodriguez, however, like in his fight with Chidi Nijikwani, like he got his head split open. Like he was, he was like bleeding. Like it was a bad cut and he walked him down and like finished him in the second round. Like Gregory Rodriguez is a dog, dude. Like he he's he's powerful on the feet. Getting Brad Tavares out there out of there in the third round. Like like his grappling. He's been wanting to display his grappling a bit more lately. And I just think Gregory Rodriguez can easily either take him to the ground and control him there, or on the feet, just making CLD feel his power and making him more hesitant. But and if anything, I can trust RoboCop to have more of a sense of urgency to get this one out of the judge's hand than CLD. So give me Robo Obama to get this one done. What do you think, Litz? All applause to Dana and the matchmakers, man. Like what a bang! Like absolute fire matchmaking here. Um, I mean, I'm a huge CLD fan. I, you know, I continue to bet this guy. I mean, the Salulum one, and honestly, Claudio Ribeiro were kind of layups. I mean, looking back, I mean, to be honest, they're kind of layup. So this is the real first one since he fought Petrosian, where he's actually fighting somebody who's kind of not a can on the other side. I mean, I'm kind of with you. Uh, Robocop definitely has the grappling upside. Like if he if he wants to get takedowns, I honestly think takedowns maybe not free, but he can definitely mix in takedowns and win some minutes there. And then, I mean, Robocop's got a chin like <laughs> this guy. This guy can bang unless you're going up against Hulk Fahea. Uh, but uh, it's it's such a good fight. I, I keep going back and forth. I mean, I my heart my heart says CLD, but I think my brain's my brain's definitely saying Robocop mixing in the takedowns. I think. What does your gut say? <laughs> Man, your heart? It's, 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 yeah, yeah, <laughs> it's really close. I, I I think I'll probably stick with you. I'll probably go Robocop. Yeah, we've been pretty. We've been pretty agreeable so far, but this next one, yeah. I've been waiting for this next fight because I, like some of our people in our chat, like thinks I have a hot take on this one, but I'm curious what you have to say on this, but Bobby Green versus Patty Pimblett. Personally, I am on Bobby Green. Granted, his chin has been like getting cracked lately, but 
I think he is just so much better on the feet. He's like one of the only people like in fighting to make that bullshit low guard shoulder roll shit work. I don't know how he does it. Grant, uh, granted, uh, John, it didn't work against Dustin Poirier and Jalen Turner, but thankfully Patty Pimblett isn't either of those people. Patty Pimblett on the feet throws looping hooks with his chin up in the air, just begging, just begging to get cracked. And I think Bobby Green, the destroyer of parlays with that Grant Dawson shit, is going to go out there and just pound Patty Pimblett right in the chin. Maybe even, possibly even get a knockdown. Because I think he's, he's kind of has a bit of underrated power. But also the one of the only things I can really see Patty Pimblett went doing to win is getting it to the mat. But the one, the one upside with that low guard is it's very easy to get the underhooks in. And I, I think Bobby Green also has very underrated takedown defense. So I think he, Bobby Green has what it takes to win this fight. And even then, even if it gets to, to like the third round, like looking at Patty Pimblett's fight with Tony Ferguson, he was heaving. He was huffing and puffing. He was like tiring out in that third round. And even Tony Ferguson saw it. The only problem with Tony Ferguson is he gets too comfortable on his back. But with Bobby Green, I think I can trust him to keep this on the feet if need be. So give me Bobby Green to get this one done. What do you got for me, Litz? Honestly, I really don't have much to add. I mean, Bobby is so much better on the feet. Like, it's it's not even... I don't even think it's close. Like, I, I mean, I really think this is the kind of fight where we can look back and, like, Bobby can smoke this guy. I mean, Bobby brings so much more volume. He's so much more accurate. Way better striking defense. He, it, Bobby can do some real damage. My, I mean, my, really, my only problem, my only worry is this could look uh, like the Drew Dober fight. Where he's just absolutely cooking Patty, and then Patty lands one bomb. But I, I still that I still don't think that's enough to sway me from Bobby, I, especially now that the lines come down and this is like basically a pick 'em. I mean, Bobby open, he was like minus two fifty on opener. Like the books really rate Bobby here. I, I, I'm, I don't know. I, to me, this is like if I have to bet pre, if I have to pick a side pre, definitely Bobby for sure. It's funny that you agree, that we're agreed on this because while we were breaking this these fights down, I got a notification from our buddy uh, Habibi's UFC picks. He put a he put a one unit money line bet on Patty Pimblet, <laughs> and he's he's been calling me crazy like Bobby Green. He, he he's been getting smoked, almost got killed by Jalen Turner. Like I don't know, man. Like oh. Um, Ooh, I'm I'm so happy we agree on this one because I I was starting to get a little worried. I mean, he's he's so much better on like the way that he was cooking Jim Miller and like it's not, I mean we can say what we want about Jim Miller, but Jim Miller was still knocking people knocking people out even at his old age, and Bobby absolutely smoked him on the feet. Like that wasn't even competitive. Yeah, no, I think who who was it? Was it Zach Reese that Jim? Who was it? Uh, no, it was Jesse Butler. Remember that Jesse mm, Butler knockout? Mm. Oh, I bet Jim Miller knocked out there. <laughs> I mean, yeah. anytime he gets a can, he's going to splatter him. Yeah, I know that he was going to finish Jesse Butler, but he killed that man. That man oh, is Oh, yeah. Dead. He, he, he still hits hard, man. There, legend has it, Jesse Butler is still asleep to this day. Like That was terrible, dude. That was almost yeah. like a Tony Ferguson, Michael Chandler shit. But moving up the car to the co-main event, Tom Aspinall versus Curtis Blades. I want to take Curtis Blades again for the memes, but I just can't. I can't figure out. I can't. The only thing I can think of that Curtis Blades can do to beat Tom Aspinall is wrestle. But the problem with that is he has been regressing from the wrestling department since I think he, since he got knocked out by Derek Lewis, I think that just knocked the wrestling right out of him. Like even against Sergey Pavlovich, who was like the most dom, who at the time was one of the most dominant strikers in the division, knocking everyone out. He he only made like a half-ass like attempt like to shoot. Like Tom Aspinall, I think he's going to be lighter on the feet. He's going to be landing those shots needed, and even if Curtis Blades goes back to his wrestling like background. I can trust Tom Aspinall, who I think is a competent grappler, 
to stay active and to stay out of danger. So give me Tom Aspinall to get this one done. What do you think, Litz? Yeah, I pretty much agree. Um, I mean, I, I went in wanting to take that. I want to take Blades for sure because to me, man, this number is stupid. Like, I mean, their first fight was a pick em. Curtis Blades was like minus 200 versus Pavi before that fight. Um, he was pick him versus Almeida and then wins that one. And now he's, you know, Aspinall's out here minus like almost 400. He's going to close minus 400 versus Curtis Blades. I mean, that's crazy to me. But yeah, I think the striking edge could be really massive if Curtis isn't wrestling. Curtis won't wrestle, man. <laughs> like the only reason, the only reason he was minus 250 over Pavi is because everybody expected him to wrestle. He's not minus 250 versus Pavi on the feet. And, uh, I mean, if if, if this get, if this fight gets extended, I think that Curtis Blades money line is like way off. Like either this underprice is way off, or Curtis Blades money line is way off. One of the two. But it's probably going to be under. What do you think of Curtis Blades' striking defense? I remember in the Sergey fight, like when he was like curled up, like even when Sergey landed on his guard, it felt like he was just knocking him around. Oh yeah, I'm, but I mean, I don't know. Do you think that's like Sergey's power? Like, I mean, I think Sergey definitely hits hard. It's just, I don't know. This uh, definitely were some nasty reactions. Yeah, and now it's just a matter of, do you think Tom Aspinall has Sergey-esque power, or like, eh. no, you don't. I mean, I, I don't know. I mean, Curtis, uh, according to to UFC stats, Curtis ate thirty six punches in three minutes. I don't think Aspinall is going to bring that kind of volume. Yeah. I, I don't know if I, I don't know if Aspinall hits as hard. When's the know. last time Aspinall has been out of round uh, round one? It's it's been a minute. He's never been over one and a half in UFC in the UFC. So that's yeah. why I think I think I think that under could be way off because like it's minus one sixty now. That could be way off. I, like that could look minus three hundred if Curtis isn't wrestling. But I don't know. Yeah, I I. Derek Lewis just ruined his wrestling. He just scarred him for life. <laughs> like whenever he goes to That's shoot, he just sees that. the uppercut. Oh. But moving up to the main event, the one we've all been waiting for, says no one. Leon Rocky Edwards versus Bilal who? Muhammad. Now, I think I'm going to go with Leon Edwards here. I think on the feet, he's just w- going to be way better. I do not give a shit what you say about that Sean Brady win. Him folding like a cheap tent. I don't care. I think Edwards is just going to be way better. And if I have to be honest, Bilal Muhammad's last win against Gilbert Burns was like the most unimpressive win I've seen. Because Bur- Burns was like one arm since round one. And Bilal still like couldn't find a finish. And he, at times, was still keeping it competitive. One arm Burns was doing this. The man who's allergic to jabs. And Edwards, and the real thing for Bilal is, can he get the wrestling going? And although I will say Edwards' frame isn't very good for stuffing takedowns with how small his hips are, he's been somehow making it work. I mean, he broke Kamara Usman's 100% 100% takedown defense. He almost subbed Col- uh, the ghost of Colby Covington. I don't know what the fuck kind of version of Colby Covington came out that night, but it honestly, I and uh, and the other thing is the icing on the cake is I think I can trust Leon Edwards to cheat if things get dicey. And if you're not cheating, you're not trying. Let's be honest here. Like. I, I, I just got to go with Leon. I think the UFC wants him to win. No one wants Bilal. No one remembers the name Muhammad to win. So I'm going to trust Leon Edwards to save the welterweight division and keep that belt away from Bilal Muhammad. So what do you got for me, Litz? I, uh, well, I mean, personally, I'm always going to remember the name because I bet him versus Gilbert and I bet him versus Brady and Luke Gay and, and Wonderboy. I mean, the guy is, the guy is printed me money over these past couple fights. I, um, I can say the same about Leon though. I mean, Leon versus Colby, I, I think was free as air. I, I was really surprised that that line was lined as, clo- it was like close to pick up for a majority of the week. I could have swore. And, and that just blows my mind because I think Colby's washed. I think I think he's washed. Uh, I, I I really like this fight for Leon. Um, 
I, I, I just think Bilal's, as, especially his accuracy on the feet, yeah, like the way you you said, he was really struggling with uh, the one on Gilbert Burns for a little bit. And even versus Sean Brady, like he's cooking at 38% versus Sean Brady, who has absolutely no head movement. And honestly, his footwork was pretty ass. So if he's bringing that kind of accuracy, his one, two is going to get countered into oblivion by Leon. Like the one thing about Leon, his counters are nasty. Like the reason... Colby wasn't pushing the wrestling, I think, as much is because he was getting countered every time he tried to get in there. It, if Bilal does that, I think Bilal could get knocked out. Um, this under definitely entices me a little bit. Ooh, you think Bilal gets knocked out? I mean, the the price the price is kind kind of enticing. The price is kind of enticing. Um, I'm gonna see what other books open, but if they give me a good number, I'll definitely run Leon. Leon knockout or Leon finish only in some way, because uh, obviously Bilal's not Bilal's not finishing him here. He didn't even knock Brady down in that KO. The ref just felt so bad for Sean Brady. He's like, okay, you've seen enough. Yeah, like kid, just stop. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think Bilal Bilal hasn't been training with Khabib, has he? Khabib's been like on the run for tax evasion. I uh, I I saw apparently Khabib gave Bilal the game plan. Khabib gave Bilal the game plan. I mean, I don't really know what the game the game plan is going to be. Wrestle, wrestle, yeah, wrestle, yeah. because he can't he can't stand with Leon. I mean, I, I just don't like. Do you think? What do you think of his wrestling? I, I mean, I'd love to ask you because, like, to me, it's fine because especially in the Wonder Boy fight, he was just easily top timing Wonder Boy. But like, I don't know. I feel like Leon's just a different animal. It feels like for me, Bilal doesn't really search for any submissions he doesn't really go for like oh yeah that's it it just feels yeah. like he his game plan to me in the wrestling department feels like get the back get top control and just r- cruise this out don't ri- don't risk any attempts to lose position and give them an edge I, that's kind of what i'm getting at because he's not really dangerous on the mat like when's the last time he's threatened a, a real submission attempt like, I don't even it's, think he even tried with Luke A. Like, and he had the back for, I, like, I, 10 minutes. Yeah, I think Wonder Boy was the last one. And Wonder Boy was another one. He just destroyed Wonder Boy. But, like, but I don't know what that means. I don't, I, I don't rate Wonder Boy off of his back. You know, Leon off of his back, like, he's pretty good. Yeah, uh, props to Wonder Boy, though. He's, like, 40 years old. And he, oh, yeah, is so it, was it me, or did he improve his grappling against Shavcat? I mean, I don't, I don't know. I'm not, uh, I'm not completely sold on Shavcat, so I don't know. I also don't think Shavcat pushed the gr- wrestling like he was supposed to. He fucked around and found out on the feet a little bit. So then, then what do you think? Then in that case, I have to ask you because I, I, I'm on the Shavcat train. But there's talks about Ian Gary for Shavcat Rachmanov. Who's your like pick right off the bat? I, I think that one, that one I would probably want Shavcat, but I'm telling you, if they ever gave me JDM versus Shavcat, I think JDM's killing him. That's rough, dude. That's rough. I, ooh, because I don't know. He I was think J- taken down by Gilbert. I, 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 I don't know. He just he doesn't quit on himself though. And honestly, I think he was defending most of the takedowns pretty well. He was just doing dumb shit in the transitions. Like I, I really think if he got extended situations on the feet with Shavcat, like the way that Shavcat was versus Jeff Neal. Like if I get that with JDM, JDM's killing him, I think. But I, I don't know. I mean, that's a big if JDM's hurt. He's probably going to get Ian Gary now. I just don't think Ian Gary's got the power. Well, if that's a fight that comes up, I hope to have you on here helping break that down. I want to talk to you about that. But before we yeah, call it for the day, what is your one lock of the car? Like if you had to give one like good solid parlay piece what what are you thinking because for me i'm thinking nathaniel wood minus three and a half yeah yeah i definitely respect the nathaniel wood one i, I honestly i really think Callan's good here uh, like if dk hopefully gives me like minus 200 or less but i honestly think Callan's pretty good here i just think jake hadley moving up to 135 is no go you know what else i'm thinking I'm thinking Manel Cape to get the finish, decision, no action. I wonder what that's yeah. going to be at. Um, you know what? I think Bet Online already opened. Let's see. Yeah, we're looking at like probably plus money when DK opens it. So I'm definitely dropping a couple units probably. Oh, Manel yeah, Cup that's finish only. 
that's a nice one. I can. I don't know about Makayev getting a, a last second triangle again. I don't fucking think lightning strikes three times. <laughs> no, I, don't, I mean, it, it, the way that he fights, like it, it blows my mind that somebody hasn't beaten this guy yet. It really does. But it's, uh, it's going to happen eventually. Yeah. But that's all we got for you guys today. Thank you all for watching. Hope you all enjoy. Chee wee wees.